Great journeys always reveal one thing, the strength you never knew you had before you left. You know what I'm saying? Let's play for each other, make yeah. a great one today. All for each other, each other baby. The Chicago Bears set out to improve on their 9 and 7 94 season. And while they finished right back at 9 and 7 again, what an enlightening journey it was. Right from the opening kickoff, it was a season played on the edge. A cliffhanger full of surprising twists and shocking endings. They found out that you could fire four touchdown passes and lose. Later, they tossed up an interception and fumbled five times, but still managed to defeat the playoff bound Eagles. Twice they scored 28 and lost. Once they scraped together 14 and won. But through it all, they never quit, and they always hit. <laughs> Head coach Dave Wanstead never lost sight of the big picture. To do big things, you have to make big plays. Big plays win games and earn championships. In 1995, the Bears ran up nearly 70 more first downs, 1,000 more yards, and over 120 more points than the year before. Salam, the tailback, give her a chance, Salam, big home on side of the ten of the five, and he's sitting on the end zone, touchdown! They were a team of risk takers, playmakers, and record breakers. They played on the edge of your seat, at the top of your lungs, bombs away football. And their sights are set on even bigger things in 96. This is the ticket to great plays. Spectacular catches. Hard hits. And magic moments. And for the 12th time in 13 years, it was a ticket to an opening day win. Against the Vikings, the Bears unveiled their attacking new-look offense. The plan was to stretch the field, exploit weaknesses, and eat up huge chunks of yardage. On defense, they stressed heating up the pocket and forcing turnovers. The plan worked to perfection as they shut out Minnesota in the second half and ripped off 24 unanswered points. Five, Kramer back to throw. Looking right, throws the end zone. Touchdown, Conway! Fake handoff, Kramer rolling right, throws the end zone. Touchdown, it! Receivers right and left, gives Salam up the middle. Salam diving forward to the goal. Touchdown! Two weeks later, they dominated on both sides of the ball and special teams to blow out the Bucks. First down and goal to go Bears. Offset on the backfield. Give Robert Green up the middle to the yes. side. And the end zone. Touchdown! Robert Green untouched. Jeff Green back deep in the... In October, the Bears entered the zone. 
They were 4-0 in the month, and big plays were followed by even bigger ones. It all started against the Panthers. Fontenot at center, Todd Perry back at left guard, right guard is Jay Lewenberg, Williams is at the right tackle spot, play action, and Kramer on first and ten back to throw, rainbows deep down the right sidelines, to the end zone, leaping grab for the touchdown! Eric Kramer, in his own personal zone all season long, threw three touchdown passes in what quickly became a high-scoring nail-biter. Off play action, rolling right, Kramer lost the right side of the end zone, Jennings over the shoulder, oh, makes a sensational catch, touchdown! Keith Jennings sprawling in the right corner of the end zone, hold it in! Down by three in the final minutes, the Bears were down but not out, and they looked to Eric Kramer to get them close. He led a crisp 10-play do-or-die drive that had them at the brink of victory with 38 seconds remaining. Third down, goal to go on the one. Straight eye formation here that gives Green breaks to the right to the outside of the goal line, reaches to the end zone, Chicago made it back-to-back -back victories over expansion teams with a road win down in Jacksonville. The big play man this time was Curtis Conway, who scored three touchdowns, the most by a Bear in 12 years. The Jags were simply no match for the monsters of the Conway. Jack Wire show a blitz up front. Kramer takes. In a tight pocket, throws it over the middle. Got Conway, Conway, go, 30 to the 25, go, 20. Go, Hit the go, 15, 10, go, touchdown! They were four and two. Short-circuiting scoreboards and running up 30 points a game. Red, right, 22, Razor, on the quick, ready? The trigger man was Iron Man Eric Kramer, the only NFL quarterback to take every snap in 1995. Vikings show a blitz up front. They've got Del Rio and Barnett in the uh, blitz position. Back to throw Kramer off play action. Rainbow, yeah. right side. Conway, ahead of the field. 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Curtis Conway. Oh, my goodness. He was like Secretariat in the Belmont. Eric Kramer won the triple crown of quarterbacking. He threw the most passes for the most yards with the fewest interceptions in team history. His 29 touchdown passes broke Sid Luckman's mark that stood for 52 years. And quite simply, he had the best single season a Bear quarterback ever had. I give you lightning on the line. It's gonna be lightning pump. I give you that. Automatic pump. Get him, get him Up front, Jerry Fontenot, Todd Perry, Todd Berger, and Jay Lewenberg were part of a unit that had only two holding penalties all year. James Williams and Andy Heck were the bookends of a line that allowed a league low 15 sacks. Six touchdown catches by Keith Jennings were the most by a Bear tight end in 32 years. Jennings, Chris Gedney, and number 89 Ryan Wetnight were tough targets who fought for every yard. It had been 25 years since a receiver had cracked the 1,000 yard mark. The big play Bears featured not one, but two. Jeff Graham set a new yardage record while Curtis Conway scored in a record tying seven straight games on his way to a team high 12 touchdowns. Michael Timpson was a clutch option who turned third down into first down. And on the ground, the chains were moved by Robert Green. Green was a multi-purpose Swiss Army knife of a back, catching passes, blocking, and slicing up defenses for over five yards a carry. 
Lewis Tillman and Raymond Harris replacement Tony Carter bolstered an improved ground game. But the back of the future is Heisman winner Rashan Salam. All Salam did was break Walter Payton's rookie rushing record, run for over a thousand yards, and score ten touchdowns. With Salam as the battering ram and the offense more balanced than ever, the big play Bears were on their way to 392 points, the most in ten years. In October, the Bears celebrated the 10-year anniversary of their Super Bowl championship. And last but certainly not least, the NFL's all-time leading running back, Walter Payton. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Super Bowl 20 Super Bowl champion, Chicago Bears, we want to say this was for you because you stood by us, you gave us the support, we had fun doing it, and thanks to you, we all can celebrate. The 85 world champions were a memorable cast of characters full of sound and fury. But in the game played that day against Houston, the big play Bears lit some fireworks of their own. And Kramer back to throw. The rush is on, steps up, rainbows deep down the middle, got a man out there. Come away. They cruised to a 25-0 lead, paced by three fumble recoveries by John Theory and a safety by Al Fontenot. Backs are split wide, and back to throw Chandler. Chandler under pressure in the end zone. They had reeled off three straight wins, and next up, a trip to the Metrodome, where they looked to sweep the bikes and snap an eight-game Monday night losing streak. Defensive tackle and fullback Jim Flanagan caught Minnesota off guard, hauling in the first of two Kramer scoring passes, and with just 35 seconds left in the half, the Viking defense made a much bigger mistake. They let Curtis Conway get behind them. Now the Bears again without a huddle, 35 seconds to go. Back to throw, Kramer rushes on, steps up, rainbows deep down the middle, Conway over the shoulder. Yeah. In their finest effort of the season, the defense allowed only two field goals, sacked Warren Moon four times, and hammered home a second half shutout. Moon takes Bears in a blitz. Moon hard back inside Minnesota. Chicago was a division leading six and two. But in the next two weeks, they'd face the Super Bowl bound Steelers and the championship game bound Packers. Dave Wanstead would need every big play in the book. In both games, Chicago scored first. Second and goal, Kramer back to throw. Hit as he throws the middle of the end zone. Touchdown, Eric Kramer to Curtis Conway. Six yard touchdown pass. In both games, Kramer fought hard, firing three touchdown passes against Pittsburgh. And two more up in Lambeau as the Bears kept pace. Down from the two and a half yard line, goal to go for the Bears. Kramer takes Gibson on, leaps the right side of the line to the end zone for the touchdown. Back at Soldier Field, the Bears crept out to a touchdown lead against the Steelers as darkness crept in along Lake Michigan. Kramer takes short drop, swings it left side, went night of the ten, makes the turn to the five, dives end zone, touchdown! Just before halftime, Kramer and Conway shocked the Packers, and the game was deadlocked at 21. Wipes up rainbows deep down the right side. Conway for the touchdown. Dave Wanstead was getting the big plays he had to have. Now he needed one from his defense. 
Alonzo Spellman and Barry Minter were the playmakers this time. In Green Bay, the Bears fought to the bitter end and the bitter cold, but three passes in the final 11 seconds fell incomplete, and they lost by seven. Even worse, they lost in overtime to Pittsburgh. The razor-close defeats left them worn out and struggling for their playoff lives. Blue and orange, I bleed blue and orange. I love the Bears. Yeah, the Bears, right. there's nobody better. Who does nobody. it? Who does it? Nobody. A three-game losing streak couldn't keep true fans down for long as the Bears marched into the Meadowlands. Last year, last year I went to 20 games and drove 18,500 miles. <laughs> Chicago needed a win to reassert themselves. Let's go, Big Hammer. Kramer takes out a reverse, gives it to him, sweeping left, he's got the angle, cuts it back, gets out of heart, but touchdown! Great teams aren't great all the time. They're just great when they have to be. The Bears were just that. One hand, did you see that? Did you see that, man? One hand! Takes the snap from Fontenot, no, fakes to Green, roll out right. Go! Oh, what is that? Punch it in! Kramer looking the right side of the end zone. Now throw it the right side. Touchdown! Michael Timpson's second touchdown helped tie it. Eric Kramer had all his timeouts, but only 48 seconds left to work with. He squeezed in eight plays and squeezed out 48 yards. Then it was up to clutch kicker Kevin Butler. I like Kevin Butler with the game on the line. In the course of his career, he's won so many games down the stretch. Mr. Ice. Getting down on one knee. Arm extended. Here it is. Placement made. Kick is on its way to the upright. Yeah. And it is good. Butler's heroics saved the day. Now they needed a strong finishing kick to save their playoff hopes. They were on the bubble and they needed some pop. Now, if it's uh, the end, if the minute the back sits inside, your, your green dog is over. You go ahead and go get them. Go get them, they did. And that pop would come from the defense. Jim Flanagan often got there first, and his 11 sacks led the team. Not far behind was Chris Zorich, who led the line in tackles for the third straight year. The Bears had seven more sacks than in 94 by rotating in fresh troops like Carl Simpson, John Theory, and Al Fontenot. Alonzo Spellman set a club record by chalking up a sack in seven straight games. And he's counted on to be a force for years to come. Linebackers like Joe Kane were a big reason why the Bears were the NFL's fifth best against the run. While Barry Minter and Ron Cox got the drop on receivers. Benson Smith led all linebackers in sacks, and he spearheaded the big play hit parade. <laughs> Despite missing seven games, Donnell Wolford topped the team in interception. They increased their 94 interception total by four as Jeremy Lincoln chipped in along with Dwayne Joseph, James Burton, and Kevin Minifield. Mark Carrier led in passes defended while John Mangum, 
and Anthony Marshall complimented leading tackler Marty Carter, who was always around the ball. Two December losses rushed them to the ER. But as for the playoffs, there was still a fighting spirit and lots of Chicago hope. It had been nine years since the Bears had won their final two games. They had to do exactly that to have a chance to play in January. As always, big plays would tell the tale. Second down for the Bears. Second down and about five. Back to throw Kramer. Steps up against the pressure. Wins the deep down the middle. Got a man out there. Kramer the pass. Touchdown! Against Tampa Bay, they landed a first round knockout. Four turnovers by the defense and three touchdowns from Rashan Salam kept their hopes alive. Graham to the left side, Carter the fullback. Salam the tailback, give Rashan Salam. Big hole left side of the team of the five, and he's spin on the end zone. Touchdown! Get the emotion to the right first and goal from the three, gives Salam off the right side, and he walks into the end zone. The playoff bound Eagles were the final test. A win along with an Atlanta loss and Chicago was in. The big play Bears were just that. As two touchdowns by Keith Jennings and three sacks by Alonzo Spellman forged a critical victory. With one eye on the Falcons and the other on the Eagles, the Bears controlled the outcome in the only game they could. Thirteen minutes after the game, they learned that Atlanta had won two, and Chicago was the only nine and seven team not to make the playoffs. This season, the Bears plan to control their own destiny, rely on one another, and leave nothing to chance. Armed with an offensive arsenal unmatched in years, Chicago is poised to make all the big plays for a division title. Johnson, the long set back behind Kramer, who backpedals. Deep drop, rainbows, the left side of the end zone. Touchdown! Dave Wanstead has coached in a Super Bowl and has guided his Bears to the playoffs. And he knows what it takes to succeed. You can't remain the same. Winners make changes, like the bold acquisition of three-time All-Pro Brian Cox. Cox will enhance a rich mix of talent ready to fight their way deep into the playoffs. They're supported by the greatest fans in football, and they're ready to make the big plays necessary to be a champion. Last year, head coach Dave Wanstead guided a ragtag bunch of no-names to a playoff win. Boy, he'd better shape up. Yeah, I think he's got to be on the hot seat this year. If he doesn't win at all, I'd, I'd get rid of him. No, uh, Dave Wanstead has done everything you could ask for in, in two seasons with the Bears, and there's no reason to believe that they won't be at least as good this year, maybe a little better. 
Think about Dave Wanstead. He had zero Pro Bowl players on his roster last year, and he got a team into the second round of the playoffs. That's tremendous. One of his greatest assets to me is the ability to get 53 guys in a room and say, we don't care what our stats are. We care that we win this playoff game no matter who does it. And I think it's a tribute to him. I see him, Link. That's okay, baby. You got it. We need to make a play up front. We need to get off a block and make something happen. This season, Trace Armstrong will not be making plays for the Bears. He was sent to Miami for draft picks. Well, everyone will talk about the fact that the Bears lost their sack leader from last year, Trace Armstrong, whom they traded to Miami, but think about it, he had seven and a half sacks. That's not that many sacks. It's not like losing a Charles Haley. I would expect Alonzo Spellman at this point in his career to be able to get at least that many sacks this year. He'll get some help from John Theory, the younger player, but I do believe that Alonzo Spellman will step up and maybe be a Pro Bowl caliber player by the end of 1995. How Spellman does is going to indicate to me how the Bears do this year, not only as a defense, but as a team. If he comes through strongly and has even a Jeff Cross type of 10 sack year, this is going to be a vast, uh, a vast improvement for him in terms of consistency. And I don't think the Bear defense is going to be hurt all that much by Armstrong's loss. Nor will they be hurt by the loss of safety Sean Gale the last remaining starter from their 1985 Super Bowl defense. The Bears merely replaced one run-stuffing number 23 with another. Tampa Bay's Marty Carter, a younger version who's familiar with life in the NFC Central. Carter will join a unit of opportunistic role players, led by one of the best pure defenders in the league, playmaking cornerback, Donnell Wolford, number 21. I felt very, very strongly last year that along with Deion Sanders, this guy was the biggest difference maker at cornerback in the NFL last year, even more so than Rod Woodson. The reason I felt that way is very, very simple. He has become a physical player, and I think his coverage skills, I'm not saying are second to none, because I think Sanders really blankets people. Woodson, when he's on his game, does the same thing. But his coverage skills are as good as any player other than Deion Sanders, in my opinion, in the NFL. I think he's that good, and I think last year, him not being a Pro Bowl starter for the NFC was uh, a huge injustice. I think that as far as a team defense concept, they played extremely well. They aren't nearly as talented player for player as the Cowboys were, but I think Wanstead strategically uh, can match up in a, in, a, in a mental chess game with any coordinator in the league right now. And it seems they have the targets in place to match up in the passing game as well. Receivers Jeff Graham and Curtis Conway are the likely starters. They invested a lot in Curtis Conway and I think the time has come for him to, to justify that number one draft pick. Graham had a great year last year and I think Graham and Conway, the two young guys, are gonna be the key to that team. If Conway is injured like last year, Look for two former Patriots to step in. Greg McMurtry or newly acquired Michael Timpson. Timpson is a lackluster practice player, but Wanstead will put an end to that immediately. And now, with four quality receivers, the Bears will finally be able to keep defenses honest. What this does is especially in that division where the Bears have been played so close to the vest, you know, so almost eight in the box type of uh, uh, type of defense against them all the time. Um, they're going to be able to spread the field slightly so that even uh, even though the quarterbacks on these teams, relatively speaking, have poor arms, um, I still think they're going to be able to spread the field a little bit more, which is a definite must for their running game. The running game. No matter what assistant head coach Tony Wise tried, it never improved. A couple of years ago, down in Dallas, Wise unleashed Emmett Smith. Lewis Tillman and Raymond Harris are not Emmett Smith. Because I'm going to keep Tillman flowing to give the guard a chance. Last year, Tillman and company averaged a mere 3.3 yards a carry. Something had to be done. Lewis Tillman, Spencer Tillman, Lawyer Tillman, it doesn't matter. 
none of those guys were going to be the marquee running back that Dave Wanstead needs to get the Bear offense to where he wants it to be. I think by late in the season, Dave Wanstead and his staff had decided that Lewis Tillman was not their guy. Were they going to consistently give the ball to Raymond Harris? Were they going to look elsewhere in 1995? That was obviously answered on draft day when they go after Rashawn Salam, who had the gaudiest per rush average in college football last year, playing against a big time schedule. Here's a guy who I think is going to be a real mutter and is going to be able to get outside in a division where you have to get outside. Salam is going to give them the little bit of outside burst that they didn't have last year with Tillman and they haven't had since Walter Payton. For some reason it became trendy to rip Rashawn Salam right around the time where he won the Heisman Trophy. All the guy did was get 2,000 yards for one of the best teams in the country uh, and win the Heisman and then all you heard was well, he's a little slow, he's not a great breakaway back, he's not this. A lot of his yards in college came after he had already turned the corner on the option. Well, so what? Yards are yards. And I think unless Rashawn Salam is a complete failure or he gets injured, that is going to be a marked improvement. I think that Salam will have as much opportunity immediately to be a factor for an NFL team as any rookie drafted this year. Drafting Salam was Wanstead's boldest move. Now he must make his biggest decision. Who will start at quarterback? Eric Kramer or Steve Walsh, the miracle man who took over and led them to the playoffs? I think most people thought Steve Walsh was out of the league. This guy wasn't dead. He was cremated. Uh, where did Steve Walsh come from and his resurrection? That's a great story. Bears do have a lot invested in Kramer, and if Kramer is the clear-cut winner in a competition, he will be the guy. But I think Dave Wanstead will evaluate it on who gives the Bears the best chance to win. Based on last year, that's Steve Walsh. I think Steve Walsh wins the Kramer-Walsh battle because I think that Dave Wanstead learned last year that he could really go to war with this guy. I think Dave personally feels bad for Kramer because it was one of those Lou Gehrig, Wally Pip things where once the guy lost his job and they started to win a few games, he wasn't going to get his job back. But I think Dave is going to go with performance, clutch performance, and that's why I think Walsh is going to win the job. The key for the Bears this season is going to be their division games. The division is so competitive. You've got four teams that made the playoffs last year, the first time that's ever happened. And Tampa Bay, you'd think, would improve a little bit. Now, that's eight tough games, and if the Bears can win maybe six of them, I think they have an excellent chance to win the division. I think 10 and 6 might be a realistic goal for them. If Rashawn Salam becomes the 1,200, 1,300-yard threat that they drafted him to be, if he's able to get outside, you're going to see this team is going to be a 10-win team and either a division champion or a wild-card home team.